Hey everybody, it's me, Will Jones, and this is SCG Reviews, and today we're going to be talking about the Red Dragon Inn. The Red Dragon Inn is a competitive fantasy drinking and backstabbing game for two to four players. Each player takes on the role of a fantasy adventurer recently returned from Conquest, sitting around their favorite tavern, taking a load off, drinking and gambling and relaxing to pass the time. The winner is the last player to end their evening of merriment not dead broke or passed out from drinking too much. Play goes around in fairly quick succession in turn order in which players will play cards from their own character-specific deck, trying to affect the fortitude or alcohol content of themselves or their opponents. Your fortitude starts out high and is lowered by things like taking wax from other players, your alcohol content is low and is increased by drinking, and if the two of them ever meet, you pass out drunk and you're out of the game. You also have gold coins, which are used primarily for gambling with specific gambling cards, and if you ever run out of them, you're also out of the game. First off, Disclaimer, the version of this game that I'm using for this review is actually Red Dragon in 3, which is one of their standalone expansions, of which there are like 230. But they all play pretty much the same, so what I tell you in this review can apply to any of the expansions or to the base game. Now the first thing you're going to notice when you pick up Red Dragon Inn is the aesthetic. It's got this very Dungeons and Dragons thing, that sort of classic thing of you're in a tavern and a man approaches you. You know, that sort of group of adventurers sitting around knocking back ale and listening to the local minstrel kind of thing. And they really lean hard into that theme. The box art, all the card art, all the card titles, any flavor text they have is all meant to reinforce this idea that you're sitting around a table in a tavern with your adventurer friend dealing with wenches and overpriced tavern drinks. It all works pretty well, especially when it comes to the decks themselves. Each character in here is a unique, named, drawn-out character that has their own aesthetic and their own personality, and you really get a feel for them as you're playing the game with their individual character deck. For example, most characters have a card in their deck that's kind of a point-and-click nuke attack where you can just say, choose a player, they lose two fortitude. Fairly simple. But the aesthetics of the game do a good job of making it feel like the attack that's coming from the Gnomish Artificer is different than the one coming from the Troll Brewmaster, and that's purely skinning. It's just theme, and they actually pull it off. Board construction in this game is really well done. It's this very minimalist thing with just a few deck spaces, and then your fortitude and your alcohol content are both on the same numerical, like, crescent moon track. One with a little red bead, and one with a little white bead, and as you start to lose, they get closer and closer together, which gives you this really easy to understand visual representation of how close you are to being knocked out. You're going to be playing a lot of cards, both on your turn and on your opponent's turns, because even though you're only allowed one action per turn, there are a lot of cards that you draw that aren't technically actions, they're reactions to other things, and so you have a lot going on, a, a lot to do, and that's very satisfying. There's a dark side to that, though, in that things can, one, feel pretty reactive instead of active. There are very few things that you're doing with forward agency as opposed to just responding to what someone else has done. Also, the timing chain of when someone is allowed to react first, because order does matter in these things, can get really dicey if people are taking the game too seriously around the table. Rules lawyering can be a very real problem in a lot of games, and games like Red Dragon Inn sort of exacerbate the problem by opening up opportunities for people to go, no, oh, that's not the right time for things. I've been guilty of it in the past many, many times, and a lot of people are, and it can really kill the fun of your night. It's a very asymmetric game with a lot of differences between characters, which I love. Yeah, there's a couple of similar cards like point and click, lose two fortitude, but everybody has sort of their own interesting little mechanic that nobody else does, which is just great. Wonderful replayability and a lot of flavor. Like you might have an animal companion with their own deck that's played automatically at various times, or if you're the paladin character, you have a scale of piety, and how pious you are at any given time changes your card effects, things like that. There are two huge flavor breaks, though, that I really feel like detract from the game, and they're actually your victory conditions, your fortitude and your alcohol content. Because on one hand, you're all supposed to be friends sitting around the same table, joshing around and congratulating each other after a successful adventure, but at the same time, you're whacking each other in the head over and over, and you know, one character will accidentally backstab another one, literally stick his knife in his friend's back, and you go, how is this a friendly competition of drinking game when we're actually trying to murder each other? That seems odd. And then on the other end of things is the alcohol content. You're supposed to be friends all out enjoying your well-earned spoils, having a great night, drinking, living it up, but you're actually winning if you're drinking less, which just doesn't make much sense. There is a fair amount of decision-making in Red Dragon Inn in terms of control over your own destiny that mainly takes the form of a discard and draw mechanic at the beginning of your turns so that you can help decide what types of cards you don't and do want in your hand during your turn. 
But that means that the game is mainly tactical, not strategic. You're making decisions for the next turn, not for the next several turns or for the course of the game, which means that the game lies slightly higher on the randomness curve than I in particular would like. That randomness is bumped up by the composition of the drink deck from which you're actually taking the drinks that your character is raising their alcohol content with because some of them have way, way more alcohol than others and rush your lose condition ahead just by the luck of the draw. There are definitely ways to mitigate that in the form of drink canceling or modifying cards, but it's still a little bit of a red flag in terms of game balance. I really like games that I can either declare overwhelmingly wonderful or incredibly stupid, but Red Dragon Inn sort of lurks uncomfortably in the middle of like a three and a half star review. You're gonna be able to get something out of it if you're with the right people, in the right mood, but that's a pretty narrow margin, and outside of that, it's got some real pitfalls. Really, I can only recommend it if you're in a really lighthearted, non-serious playgroup, and, preferably, you have a real affinity for fantasy stuff, especially Dungeons & Dragons, in which case you're going to get a lot more out of the aesthetic. And, I can't recommend this highly enough, try to play in character. That really enhances the mystique and adds a little something extra to the game that it might be missing in just the rulebook game design. So that's me and Red Dragon Inn. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Go ahead and click below to like and subscribe to us for more great content from Stone Circle Games. And until then, have fun around the table. Oh.